So Jennifer Caudill is here. She's a physician who's been treating fibromyalgia patients for nearly 10 years. When she first started seeing patients with this condition, a lot of doctors, a lot of people like me, thought it was made up. But you see there's been big developments in pain management for these folks. A lot of things have changed. We have a lot more information than we used to have. You know, we used to diagnose fibromyalgia by looking specifically at tender points, the areas of the body that are specifically tender. But now we know that fibromyalgia is more than just tender points. And it's really almost like a constellation of symptoms. And that's one of the biggest changes in the last so many years is that we look at this whole constellation of symptoms to really come up with a diagnosis. So I heard words exhaustion, pain. Right. These are things that exist in everyday life. How does that differ from fibromyalgia? I'm glad that you asked that because I think that's the question that a lot of people have is they say, well, what makes someone have fibromyalgia versus not? So the criteria is very specific. And let me tell you, when I think about fibromyalgia as a condition, two things really come to mind. I think of pain, I think of exhaustion. So the diagnostic criteria really requires that a patient have chronic widespread pain kind of all over their body. They also have symptoms such as fatigue, uh, waking up feeling unrefreshed. That means like you get eight hours of sleep, but you wake up in the morning, you feel like you haven't slept a yeah, wink. No you better know? off, right. Right, right. And also cognitive issues, feeling buzzy or foggy in the brain and things like that. The symptoms must be there for at least three months and not be attributable to another condition. And that's what makes it different. So the big question then is, how do I know I really have it? Can I get a blood test to tell me that? And unfortunately, there is no blood test. No, no, there's not a blood test. And in fact, one of the things we think is underlying fibromyalgia is sort of abnormal pain processing. We think it's an issue of the brain and spinal cord. People with fibromyalgia almost have this heightened sense of pain that they experience because of the way their brain and spinal cord sort of processes pain. And that's one of the most sort of important points in terms of why it happens and, and sort of what we think the, the mechanics are. So the pain might be the same as somebody else might have, but they sense it differently, yeah, I always, more loudly. I think of it like this. So if you don't mind me pinching you, Please. but I, so if I pinch you, okay, you might say, oh, well, that's annoying. Dr. Kyle. That wasn't that's much of a pitch. <laughs> okay, I'll pinch you hard. Ow! Oh, okay, there. Let <laughs> right. me do it again. No, okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay, you're saying like, okay, that was uncomfortable, but perhaps a patient with fibromyalgia, if I did that same pinch, they might perceive that pain as being that much bigger, that much worse than someone like you or me who doesn't have fibromyalgia. And it's because of that abnormal pain processing. They perceive pain differently at a higher level.